If you're watching this video, it's most likely because you have breast implants and you've decided that you don't want them anymore. If that's a choice that you're making for yourself, uh, I am not one that would criticize that choice or encourage you necessarily uh, to change your mind. Uh, however, this video will discuss, uh, I'll discuss with you uh, what your options are and if we do take the implants out, what you can expect. Uh, because there are unfortunately permanent changes that occur to your breasts, to your skin and your breast tissue uh, that we may or may not be able to help for you. So let's start by explaining uh, what it entails to um, remove these implants. So uh, the term explantation is, is what we use, is the scientific term we use for removal of breast implants. So you, you want to undergo an explantation. Some things that you need to know if you want to get rid of your breast implants is that afterwards your breasts will lose projection. They're going to look flatter, okay? And so patients say, well, if I take my implants out, are my, are my breasts then going to sag down to my belly button? And the answer is no. You're going to look like you do now, it's just going to flatten out, okay? And obviously, the bigger your implant, um, the, the more change you're going to get to your breast. So one thing I would encourage you to do before you come in for a face-to-face -face consultation is find your implant information so we know what size it is and what type of implant it is. If you don't have it at home, call your plastic surgeon to get that information. And if your plastic surgeon, previous plastic surgeon doesn't have it, then maybe try calling the center where you had the operating, uh, the center where you had the surgery at, and see if they might have those records because it's gonna be super important for us when we do a face-to-face -face consultation to know what you have so we can get an idea of what you're gonna look like when those implants are taken out, okay? But keep in mind that when they're removed, basically what happens is your breasts look flatter. You lose projection to your breasts. Now, when the implants are taken out, the skin will retract to an extent. The question is, is how much will it retract? And that's something that we can't exactly um, predict. Now, the nicer your skin, the tighter your skin, the more youthful your skin, the more it's gonna retract when those implants are taken out. Uh, and so if you have them taken out when you're, when you're in your 30s, most likely the skin's gonna tighten up better than if you have them taken out when you're in your 60s. In addition, we need to, um, well, you need to realize that that pocket that the implant was in, it needs to heal closed. And so there are certain things that we can do to help it heal closed um, uh, so it doesn't create an issue with fluid that can build up in it or another complication like that. If your scar tissue around the implant is thick, then we may need to perform a capsulectomy. And that means removal of the scar tissue surrounding the breast implant. Okay, so every implant that we put into the breast will have scar tissue built up around it. In the vast majority of cases, probably 96 to 98% of cases of new breast implant patients, that scar tissue is nice and soft. But if your breasts feel hard and firm and you wanna get rid of your implants, then most likely at least some, if not all of that scar tissue will need to be removed and this could make it a fairly invasive operation and can make it take a couple of hours. Um, but if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. And, and uh, one thing I'd like to mention too is there is there are some patients who are reading information online and from certain healthcare practitioners who are encouraging them to undergo on-block removal of their scar tissue, basically meaning removing all of the scar tissue from around the implant. In my opinion, there is no scientific data to support having to do this routinely in patients. And if it was easy, then that's one thing, but when implants are put below the muscle, that scar tissue can be very adherent to the chest wall. And removal of that scar tissue can be fairly hazardous and a quite bloody operation. So the difficulty in removing the scar tissue needs to be weighed against the desire to have all of it removed if that's something that you're considering. And that's something that we can talk about in a face-to-face -face consultation. Now, if the scar tissue is extremely firm, then I agree that to try to remove all of it can have some purpose there. But if your scar tissue is very thin, then to try to remove all of the scar tissue with the implant in the majority of cases is not necessary and would be, um, in my opinion, excessively invasive to your body. So uh, this is definitely a hot topic right now in plastic surgery, um, but what I would recommend these situations is if the scar tissue is firm, then let's remove any parts of it that appear abnormal. But if your scar tissue is very soft, 
then I don't recommend complete removal of scar tissue because it is fairly invasive, uh, would increase your risk of complications and thin out your breast tissue, and there's no science to show that it would gather you any benefit anyway. The final thing you need to consider is if you want to undergo an explantation, um, is that you can always put the implants back in later, okay? And this is something that I don't say this to you because I encourage you, you know, think about it, put them, put them back in. But I'm telling you this just for your own peace of mind. If you say, look, I don't think I want implants anymore, but, you know, what if I change my mind later? Well, if you change your mind later, you can. That's okay, you know? Obviously, it's not ideal to change it because you don't want to undergo an operation that is unnecessary. Um, but at the same time, that's something that is in your back pocket should you decide that you change your mind. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you. So how do we undergo an explantation? Okay, well, if, <coughs> excuse me, if your scar tissue <coughs> is nice and soft, then all we have to do typically is incise through your old scar, whether it's below your muscle or around your areola, dissect down to the implant, remove the implant. And then what I do is I make multiple little cuts into the thin scar tissue that is left over that's in that pocket. And that allows that pocket to heal closed. I do put a drainage tube in and the drainage tube typically stays in for about six days. That removes any fluid that can help prevent your old pocket from closing up on its own uh, or on itself. Uh, the surgery itself, if it's just a straightforward explantation, probably takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, probably closer to an hour, it's pretty simple. Uh, after, it's a general anesthetic, so you're completely asleep, and after surgery, you head to the recovery room for about a half hour to an hour, uh, and then you head home. Now we do put a nice tight bra on you because what we want is for that leftover skin to tighten up on its own. And by putting some compression on it, I do believe that may help uh, to encourage that skin to tighten up and retract on its own. And, and ideally, you wear that bra for a good two to three months night and day afterwards. Uh, it is not a painful surgery. Most patients don't take any pain pills afterwards. And usually you can start exercising between two to three weeks. Now, I don't want you to do a lot of um, activity in the first two weeks because we want that old pocket to close off on itself. And the more movement you're doing, especially if you're doing a lot of movement with your upper body and your chest, you could potentially disrupt that and cause fluid collections, which we don't want. We want that pocket to close off on its own. Um, if it's looking good by two to three weeks, however, usually people do just fine. They can start exercising and eventually get back to completely normal activity, uh, probably just within about four to six weeks at the longest. Now, uh, what are the risks of surgery? Well, bleeding and infection is something we always look at. There is a risk you're really just not going to like the cosmetic appearance. That's probably the biggest risk is that you'll take them out, you look at your breasts and say, oh, I really don't like how this looks. Um, and that's something that I'll do my best to try to uh, educate you on what to expect with it. But what I would say just from the beginning here is expect that your breasts are going to look much flatter. You're going to lose the projection and they're going to look flat. Um, if you have big implants, they could look flat and they could look droopy with excess skin. Um, some of my patients have called it a pancake breast, unfortunately. Um, so the cosmetic issues are what people worry about with it. There are the risks of fluid collections. That's why we um, avoid a lot of um, uh, activity in the first couple of weeks. Um, there's risk, like I said, of, of really the cosmetic thing is, I think, something that does bother people. Now, there are other risks of surgery that we would talk about both during the face-to-face -face consultation as well as in the preoperative appointment. And this is a picture of somebody you can see before her explantation on the left and afterwards on the right, the implants being removed uh, and her breasts looking a bit flatter. Now, her breast implants were not that big and she had a good amount of her own breast tissue. So for her, uh, it was a... Uh, very simple operation that worked really, really well. Uh, but sometimes people come in and it's not as simple, okay? And uh, this patient, you can see, she had quite droopy breasts. And so we combined the explantation with a breast lift. Um, and the breast lift with the explantation, basically what we do is the same thing. We remove the implant. If the scar tissue is real thin, then I just make multiple cuts in it to allow it to close off. You have a drainage tube in for a week, and then we do a breast lift. The breast lift does add about an hour and a half to the operation where we're removing excess skin, bringing the nipple up into a higher position, and quite often we're making uh, cutting the nipple into a smaller size as well. 
uh, we do the breast lift and the uh, and that's basically to get rid of all of that loose skin uh, in this situation because we're removing loose skin um, a lot of times we can get a better shape than if we just take an implant out and not do anything but the trade-off is are those scars and those scars typically extend all the way around the areola circularly around the areola they go down and even underneath the breast uh, and most likely that's what's needed when you have a breast lift with an explantation because the breast lift is a skin only lift all i'm doing is removing extra skin and pulling the nipple up into a higher position i'm limited in what i can do to reshape the breast uh, i can't move tissues around to try to give you a lot rounder of a shape we're very limited in what I can do because we want it to heal fine. Uh, the surgery itself, once again, total, total surgery is probably about two and a half to three hours. It's a general anesthetic, so you're completely asleep, and the recovery is pretty similar to just the explantation. Once again, you may take a handful of pain pills the first couple of days. That's usually about it. Um, you do wear a tight bra afterwards. Uh, we want to prevent fluid collection, so you do have the drainage tube in for about six days. Now you can start exercising at three weeks. You're going to have a little more swelling with this than you would with just the explantation because of the lift being added onto it. Um, and then we do give it really six months up to a year or longer for those scars to mature. You got to keep in mind that those scars are permanent. They will never disappear and they can even get thick in some patients. And so that's a potential risk of surgery. Other risks of surgery I mentioned earlier with the explantation, bleeding and infection, uh, fluid collection, and then obviously we talked about the scars. There's also a risk of asymmetry. Um, initially, the breasts are going to look a little bit boxy, meaning kind of flat on the bottom and a little bit uh, maybe wide looking, and gradually things round out and look and feel much nicer. But that can take a good 6 to 12 months. Now, what about a capsulectomy? A capsulectomy basically is removal of excess scar tissue, and we talked about the unblock removal. So if your implants have a lot of scar tissue around them, then I would also likely perform a capsulectomy at the time of the explantation, with or without a breast lift. And depending on what you need, that can add another one to two hours to the surgery. And so in a situation where you've got thick scar tissue and you have droopy skin, then the entire surgery could take upwards of four hours or potentially more depending on exactly what you need okay and those specific details will go over with you in a face-to-face -face consultation um, if a capsulectomy is added to it the recovery is a little more difficult you may take pain pills for another day you know tack on another day or two at the most um, but other than that it should heal pretty similarly um, now I do once again encourage you is, is if you are un want to undergo the explantation with the breast lift and you want to come in to see me for a face-to-face -face consultation, bring your old implant information, bring your operative records, call your doctor or your previous doctor or call the operative center and get those records and bring them with you because it's going to be so helpful for us during the consultation so that we can go over it all together and give you a good idea of what you need. So if you want to take your implants out, by all means, I'm happy to help you with that. I'm not somebody who's going to judge you um, on that. My goal really is to make you happy and to discuss with you what's in your best interest. And for some people, it's in their best interest to have the implants removed. It's just understanding what the ramifications, what the cosmetic ramifications are, as well as what our options are and, and what uh, may be a reasonable thing to do and, and maybe things that may not be as reasonable. So I'm happy to see you in a face-to-face -face consultation where we can discuss all of these details. Thank you so much for watching this video.